Hi guys, I'm Dolly from 4BK TV and today in a Raw Talk session I have Tracy Ash. Tracy has dedicated the past 11 years to her own ascension path and understanding ascension and timelines. Tracy is there boots on the ground in Egypt at some of the most amazing temples in Egypt. I talk in depth with Tracy. Let's take a look. Okay, so Abyssir is a fifth dynasty site. So we're looking at around uh, 2950 BC, something like that. Wow. And it's an extraordinary site which is not ticketed, so it's not accessible to the public in any way. It's being currently researched it was used between the fifth dynasty and the 27th dynasties okay so we have a massive span in, in terms of the age in which this site was used and interestingly where we see a renaissance of use in later periods it gives us um the information that we need, the missing information in terms of what the primary use of the site was during the fifth dynasty, because you wouldn't have seen glyphs at that time, for example. So the later periods bring the glyphs, which give us the text, which then also give us an indication of the origins of the site, and it gives us also... Um, much more of a context in terms of how the site was used. Um, Abbasir, it's like where I'm sitting here, I can see Saqqara, the step pyramid, wow. which has the most extraordinary underground temple complex. And the complex was walled for the priests with fa false doors. And one original door that permitted the priest to enter into the underground temple complex or city, which is very Atlantis in its nature. It's a crystal complex of tunnels that we utilize for rituals and ceremonies. I mean, it's extraordinary. So we go in there on special permission. This is not any kind of fantasy. This is the work that we do. We do the underground research that is spoken about in our community. So that's what we're doing. Amazing. Our advanced ascension. You're the boots on uh, the ground. Yes, you are the boots yeah, on the ground. Yeah. And I'm a gatekeeper and my home is like a minute's walk. I've got this so site lucky. in my backyard. Um, from here... We see my my site, my original site is Abu Ghraib. And if you're aware of advanced ascension in our community, then you'll be aware of the incredible crystal hotep, which is set at the four cardinal directions. It's an, not only an advanced ascension technology, it's a time machine. And it was utilized in ancient times to set the sacred and sovereign path and timeline for now. So the ancient Egyptians were particularly aware of how to read the celestial bodies and also to read the destiny of humanity and what would happen now in terms of the procession gateway and what would happen now in terms of the elite power agenda, the global syndicate agenda in terms of reversing our timelines that we have a rightful, absolutely rightful access to during these times. What the ascension pioneers and ascension warriors and those star seeds who have indeed created an appointment at this time on Earth to build new Earth, the false timeline agenda is being massively orchestrated 
So many star seeds, indigos, warriors of new earth are feeling like every molecule, every structure in their body, in their psychology, in their consciousness is being reversed. Mm. So we have these chaotic ascension symptoms where we're also feeling the despair of the planet in terms of the collective too. So the collective density is being driven down. And it's my role in terms of my work as a gatekeeper and specialist in the timelines and a specialist in, for example, these sites that you see behind me. I've Amazing. spent many years researching the energy pathways and ancient sites Ooh. which disclose the technologies and the access and the entry to the sacred timelines once you've moved through particular initiations. Now, this part is really important and we connected because of this. There's a reality gap in our arena which is connected with real time initiation, real direct experiences in terms of energy pathway work, quality earth work, real work with the ancient ones, the ancestors. So what, we're, what we have at sites such as these, we've got a combination of both pyramid technologies and solar temples. The temples are synonymous with the timelines, as are the pyramids. However, you'll have, for example, certain texts which describe the temples as the mansions of millions of years. And the temples and the pyramids are connected in terms of their sacred architecture and what they mean within the context of our own timelines. Once we can move beyond the density of third dimension and fourth dimension. Now, what is problematic in our arena is that we can be driven by a third dimensional learning, which is also problematic because the initiation at these sites is sacred calling us into a quantum initiation in terms of our education and a quantum initiation in terms of the timelines and the gateways. Now, when we have, for example, the solar temple, and this is important because one of your key questions with me is how do we step into these portals and gateways and actually really understand what is happening yeah. <laughs> when we enter these gateways, these portals of information? Are we working safely, for example? Yes. And again... This is where my interest very strongly turned to Egypt in 2011 when I opened the first Stargate. And that immediately was filmed and it demonstrated the law of Matt when white feathers were materialized through a port's portals and there was a spontaneous materialization of the ancient ones that synchronized with the channeled information that was being directed from the site. So I'm just setting the scene in terms of my interest in advanced ascension and my specialism in gateways, mm. portals. I'm particularly interested in the gateways that house the sacred timelines our sacred and sovereign timeline, our destiny, and how we can time travel to access the most relevant and evolutionary data so that we can be absolutely the best of ourselves. And, and we can do be, that within ourselves, can't we? We can activate that yeah. each and every yeah. one of us. Yes, we can. And it's synonymous with the type of training that you receive so the frequency of your mentor or teacher is extraordinarily important 
I have a very special interest in the ACK, which is the part of the soul that has entered into contracts and completion in a particular lifetime, which yes. means we can time travel and we can assist in terms of our incarnations in terms of the timing of our incarnations so we can always assist wherever we are in terms of cycles of time which they are and this is mm. what the procession gateway is all about and it's prophesized in of course the dendera zodiac mm. and so too are the end times and how humanity navigates the end times to mature, to evolve, to awaken, to advance so that he can truly become the custodians of the planet. That part is very, very important. So when in our arena there was frenzy over, for example, the Mayan calendar, I was here in Egypt activating the stargates, working very, very carefully with the Dendera Zodiac, working very carefully, listening to the requests of each site and waiting for the extremely important data, which allows me to understand how to show up in the gateway, how to travel through the timelines in the correct protocol, how to work in advanced alchemy and how to maintain that advanced alchemy so that we are firmly closing the obstacle of the ego behind. And this is why gateways <coughs> and the technologies of sites are important because the sites are architecturally designed to not only lock into the earth as our master record keeper and also the torsion field of the planet, but also the sites are also dialed into particular star systems, which also then give How it us all connects. It all connects. It all connects. It all connects, and it gives us our future timelines too, so we can stand in these gateways and go as a human being, as an ordinary human being. Number one, I am not conventional. And number two, I am a unique sacred soul on the planet. And number three, I can indeed make an influence and make mm. the time I spend on the planet yes. matter. So yes. I leave behind a legacy for my children. Amazing. Right? Amazing. Yes. This is so important. And at the same time, this is what we've discovered in terms of our research mm. is this, that... All of the sacred union work here was done. All of the initiation work that was done was to always connect us with the creation story, was always to connect us with the creator God, was <coughs> always to help us to remember Perfect the gods timing. of the stars, right? Do you think this is perfect all... timing? Yes! <coughs> yes! Like, Okay, and when we get to such an advanced stage in our ascension, we become the gateway. Mm. We become the portal so that the kind of contact we have, we not only can stand in the sky with the gods, the gods can stand with us on the planet. Now, this is important in terms of my prophecies that have been downloaded over the last couple of years because, of course, our timeline is being reversed by an elite agenda and it is extremely dark in its purpose and its yes. motivation and we need more starseeds, 
indigos, crystals, etc., etc. We need the warriors of light to stand strong and immovable so that we can open those gateways and bring the level of contact in that can correct these toxic elite power structures. And as a child, I knew I would come in and do this work. In my 20s, I knew I was coming in to do this work. In my 20s, I knew I would work with very unusual gateway work to assist the ascension. So my timeline is pre-planned. I am always synchronizing with information that gives me the signs in terms of my pathways. What I just want to share just a kind of super exciting moment is my partner reads glyphs. I mean, he's a glyph yes, expert he and genius. So we're out here in the Abu Sir complex and because he can read the hieroglyphs on one of the fallen obelisks reads, we come from <coughs> Orion. Orion. Okay. Right. Interesting. So if, if we have the textual evidence, the academic evidence, then we're heading into some seriously good research here. So me and my partner put together advanced metaphysics. I'm a trained metaphysician. I was trained at the College of Psychic Studies left it because my work had progressed and advanced so much it needed to grow globally and it needed to be taken to many communities across the planet which i've been doing all of my career for the last two decades so wow. this isn't something that i've kind of stepped into you're or had a career your change talk. you are walking I've your been, talk you are living i your yes i've been walking path. my talk even yeah, yes. I was walking my talk even when people didn't know what I was talking about, yes. right? <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Um, and when destiny is so strong, there is nothing else because you will be continuously re rerouted until you accept who you are, what your destiny is, what you're here to be, what you're here to do. And then that allows you to be a truer missionary of light for our planet and truly step into service, which is also one of the gateways I'm extraordinarily interested in. Mm. So I'm not just interested in ancient gateways and what they do. I'm interested <coughs> in the gateways and how we tap into a power resource, timelines beyond our dreams, intelligence beyond our dreams dreams and how we channel that mm. into transforming communities in the world that we exist in. So one of my very special interests is intelligence, how we expand the mind, how we expand our awareness, mm. how we progress beyond academic intelligence mm. or how we how we travel beyond academic intelligence. How we harness that energy and how we yeah. use it and the tools that we've got. They kind and of all in sync together, don't they? They have to synchronize together. So how we step into an applied and purposeful intelligence, a quantum intelligence, that allows us to weave and heal reality and provide very precise solutions for the world today. Now, this part is very, very important. So on my gateway, I am creating events where <coughs> I'm gathering souls and minds together in, mm. in order to create an ascension hub where people are trained and they're initiated in the right kind of frequency. <coughs> we have not only the resource and the theory, 
mm. to build new earth, the intellectual resource and theory to build a foundation. new earth. So it's a foundation, your yeah. It's the foundation and it's the tipping point in terms of your life force. Yes. So you have a metaphysical presence in the world, a metaphysical articulation through the words and the thoughts and the feelings that you use. So your frequency can penetrate the density of the false matrix. Mm. Now that part is really important mm. as we know we can revolutionize reality, but what's been on the minds and the hearts and the lips of individuals in the community is how the hell <coughs> are we going to do this, mm. right? How are we going to do it? How are we so, going to do it? We're going to start to create the silence so that we can truly listen. So COVID's providing one opportunity and that is to actually enter the real internal work, inner work that is incredibly significant in terms of truly listening to what your sacred calling is. Now that's important. How we met is important, for example, to be synchronized with guidance, to also recognize the signs so you're entwined with another human being in a sacred dance and in cosmic energies <coughs> that <coughs> give you the absolute truth and the absolute confirmation that there is a meeting and a purpose for meeting another person mm. on this planet. Mm. So these times, especially in terms of New Earth, it's about collaboration. It's about connecting with individuals who are not faking the work. Yes. But who are doing the work. Yeah, walking the a, talk and... Yeah. Mm, hearing and the call. Yes, and taking, taking action mm. in terms of the call and what the call means, not just once, mm. but every single day so that our sacred and sovereign timeline is not derailed because ultimately our free will is being called into question currently. So this is much more than mediocre law of attraction, for example, mm. because we have to step into the total honoring, the total respect, the total dedication, mm. because that's where our greatest battle is. It's with ourselves in many respects first, so that we can be in charge <coughs> of our destiny. <coughs> And we can be in a relationship with ourselves on a completely different level and on a completely different level of resource and intelligence. And that means we must move into soul education, sacred education, move into the quantum presence of our sacred self and understand what that means. You know, as we reference, for example, ancient sites, ancient gateways, the ancient ones, what does that mean for ourselves? And then what does that work mean in terms of, especially with gateway work, what does that work mean? <coughs> what nationality me are you? Are you English, Tracy? Of course I am English, but I've spent so much time Th travelling and absorbing yeah. everyone else's accent. Mm. I spent a lot of time in Japan. It's one of my hubs in terms of my schools mm. and a lot of time in the States too. Um, because I'm a channel, so when you're interviewing me, I'm also channeling. Yes. Although I, I did train myself yes. so I could work as an advanced channel, trans channel. Like a conduit. Conscious. A conduit, yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, and being conscious allows me to fire out the advanced ascension frequency. So mm. when, for example, I'm working a conference, I can demonstrate what advanced ascension is rather than just talk about it. Because yes. when we talk about it, it's very, very boring. But when we are activated <coughs> in advanced ascension and we can demonstrate it and show people what it is, like open them to that gateway. Yeah. It creates miracles and inspiration and downloads and synchronicities for the individuals who are experiencing that gateway. That's the kind of stuff yeah, that I've I love doing. Yeah, I've got this thing, and I always say to people, we're like Wi-Fi. We are Wi-Fi, aren't we? we? We give off these little signals that go off like Wi-Fi to people. Like you, sure, you, I, you give out these uh, call-ins and, and they just come, the people come. Once we've recalibrated the wound, and my terminology for that is wound weaving, and I utilize mystery school processes, technologies, and protocol for that, and I'm an alchemist too. Once we get through the density of the wound and we penetrate it, then we can start to become extremely potent in the way that we can consciously influence in advanced ascension frequencies. And so our metaphysics becomes an incredibly precise tool in the way it creates our reality and the way that our thoughts and our feelings and our words can hold another individual, Ooh. change their frequency for them <coughs> as well. And one of our conversations <coughs> was to explore what the new era of work is going to be in mm. terms of these times. And again, our work has to be metaphysical. There's so much talk about metaphysics in our arena. However, training is dubious because there have been a lot of gateways that have been bound in 4D and 4D is still problematic because it doesn't penetrate the wound. No. So you can't get the integration and then the embodied and lease of the advanced um, ascension frequencies, which is what you really, really want. You want to be able to detect your own field. You want others to be able to detect your own field too. So your light is present and that's your resource and it's continuously supporting your biology, your heart and your mm. mind. So you're up-leveling your intelligence and your psychology and your physical energy levels continuously. So this is like being in a loop where you're producing your own elixir of life continuously. Okay. Right? Yeah. This is what I'm super interested in so that we It's like really a constant move... renewal. A renewal of yeah. soul, renewal of energy, renewal of life path. It's like a constant ongoing journey that's all directed yeah. to the ascension path. This yes. Is what you're so, re yes. so remember this: our sacred timelines are always secular in their nature. We're always working on a dance. We're always working mm. in a spiral. Mm. Whereas the third dimensional timeline is much denser, and also it only gives us a fractal of our potential as it is bound in anti-evolutionary laws and values etc so that part is extremely important in terms of any kind of gateway work that you're doing because if you're locking into density and you're locking predominantly into the third dimensional timeline and values then the gateways that you will operate and initiate 
may also be false light gateways. Mm. And we have to be very, very careful with yes. false light gateways because that is, of course, what the orchest orchestration is playing off. How currently. can we tell the difference? How can we tell the difference between that? Okay. We tell the difference always in frequency. And this is why it's always important to be prepared when you go to site. So I've seen it for many years with many, many, many attendees in terms of trainings and in terms of tours. You have two types of clients. One who is a spirituality tourist. They won't listen. They won't sit to listen. Yeah. And what you must do is you must prepare yourself to not just be excited by this visual landscape, but to stand still and to absolutely, utterly first honor yourself, reset and balance. You draw the line before you dive in, right? It's really important to having the restraint and the discipline and the dedication and this is where mentors are really important because they'll stabilize your blind spots for mm. you so that part is really critical and you prepare yourself in terms of your own listening mm. so that part is really important whatever your protocol is to reset you must reset Mm. when you're working seriously with the gateways. So we you must know, listen like, within to what our heart and mind, our heart, our consciousness, hearts, hearts, our, heart our heart and mind. Because and remember, mind. everything that we are can be utilized in this protocol and process. So as our awareness amplifies, it has our to intelligence yeah. amplifies, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And it's important that we can feel at the same time as mm. process and articulate so we're understanding the realities that mm. we're experiencing so that we're functioning as a multi-intelligence system, a complex. Mm intelligent system because remember in the third dimension of timeline we're not operating as multi-dimensional mm. intelligent systems we've been restricted in terms of the third dimensional timeline so what we're doing is we need the stillness so we can resurrect the space within ourselves so we can start to activate the various gateways or portals of intelligence, which allows us to process and create our reality with greater intelligence. So we're able to process and understand so much more of the realities that we're stepping into. And remember this. These are sites of millions of years. So this takes a massive amount of dedication. Mm. I mean, I'm here and this is my 11th year and we're always discovering. You're part of a team mm. out there. How many is I, there in your team out there with you? How many do you work with? Last time we were working in Egypt was just in end of October November we created an ascension specialism project so I had seven of my most advanced students with me so my partner is as I explained earlier is in a he's a incredible academic he's um He's studying a PhD at Cairo University. He's a professor. Um, his work is extraordinary. So this is where the academic and the metaphysics meet. 
Yes. And we're doing some extremely interesting work that is unprecedented in our community. Yes. Uh, we also have incredible contact with the ancient ones. I'm also a trans medium as well. So when I call upon the ancestors, I think this is also a good protocol in terms of protection at gateways. Okay. Yes. So we must always interact with the ancient ones who protect the gateways and we must always honor them. Our and ancestors. That's correct. Our ancestors. Our own, our own ancestors and the ancient ones and the ancient ones okay so our own ancestors will create a degree of protection for us and protocol in terms of how we approach the ancient ones and the gatekeepers yes and recognizing the ancestors and the ancient ones is also part of the process of being allowed through. So when your metaphysics ability is genuine, that's when you're allowed genuine access. Access, right? okay. It's all alchemy, okay? I'm right? Alchemy yeah, within. And we, yeah. We, we know that alchemy is a science. Yes. So this isn't metaphysics by the seat of your pants. This is academic as well. metaphysics. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Astounding. And it's quantum, it's zero point, it's reality work that is absolutely precise, it's advanced psychology, it's advanced intelligence, it's advanced healing at the same time. So everything that we do as a gateway of protocol has to be incredibly precise and accurate and absolutely advanced and authentic mm. right this is what i've always spoken about throughout my whole career that our training must be as authentic as possible and again mm. these times have birthed mm. so many false prophets in our community yes. that so many receive incredibly mediocre training with the promise of metaphysics and they never experience it. Exactly, and there's nothing at the end of it, which leaves a lot of people empty and forever certain. And, and it leaves a lot of individuals in compromised gateways and they've been hijacked. Yes. Once again, in terms of false light projections and gateways that are indeed governed by darker forces. So again, we have to be incredibly careful. Now, what I just want to say about this is everything that I do, if I don't have the experience in my reality, if I don't have contact and it doesn't show up and I'm not in a situation where craft, materialize and I get time date and location this is important I'm never going to teach it unless I have that level of contact right yeah right <laughs> so what we're doing here is really interesting we've got a blend of mystery school and alchemy and a working knowledge of the sites and the text but we've also got a working knowledge in terms of how contact works. Okay. And how we can connect that, and contact. And how it... Yeah. yeah. And how I, as a gatekeeper, can take people with me and they enter into extraordinary contact experiences that also opens the gateway for them so that they can experience the wonder of incredibly advanced contact now that will accelerate your ascension your own ascension gateway your own ascension potential and that will also activate and advance synchronicities telepathy 
any kind of ascension gift, advanced intelligence, timelines, traveling, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, syn synchronicities, mm, wound healing. I mean, you name it. Contact is your real time ascension, advanced ascension accelerator or catalyst. So I can't again, wait to get out there with you. I've I've been welcomed out there with you in June, and I cannot wait to get out there in June. All being well, I cannot well, wait. I I can't wait to show you the Egypt that we experience every single day. Yes, and we are so at ease with allowing the work to unfold as it has been destined to. And what brought me here is, in my 2015 book, I wrote about the site that I was custodian of in ancient times, Abu Ghraib, which is five minutes walk from this site, by the okay, way. Wow. So I'm back on You're the back gateway. Home. Yeah. Yeah, that I was on in ancient times. And that's what I was speaking about, the time loop. Once we're in advanced ascension, then we can choose the time of our incarnation so that we can assist in the ascension. And that's what I have been given information on in terms of the way that we are synchronizing Mm. as a collective of advanced souls and we've always been advanced souls and we are the new earth builders yes. and the elite power systems are absolutely terrified of that level of quantum intelligence that can smash through the false matrix and the false power systems we can see so, them breaking down literally before our yes. eyes can't we we can. Yes, see we it. can. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. And it's happening, although there are many, many, many divisive gateways that are in operation currently, which can also influence and impact and persuade our new earth or warriors who should be currently free. So we got to mobilize together. Okay. And that's yeah. one of our purposes in meeting is to say, okay, we can't all do this in isolation or in little hubs. We need to bring the hubs together and we need to get the council <coughs> of ascension pioneers together. And we need to start speaking about mm. how we really mm. progress our community and demonstrate the miracles of real alchemy and truth and gateway work and metaphysics. And we need to lay down the next standard in terms of our community so we can get as many people through this ascension gateway. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. right. You have it. We have it. We have it. We have it. <laughs> now, Tracy, tell me a little yes. bit about the goddess because... I am a big fan. I have the goddess here that I carry with me and in my heart, as always. Okay, let me show you who I have. Okay, show me who you have. So, I have Sekhmet. Sekhmet, Sekhmet. yes. Okay, so Sekhmet is synonymous, as, it, as are all of the archaic goddesses with the primordial waters of the creation story from where we are conceived in terms yes. of our blueprint as humanity. So this is really important. And that's even another interview. In yes, it is. I was just thinking there. that. <coughs> so I have to go because I'm being okay. told to get off. Okay. Life. But this is another interview. This right? is another interview. Thank you so much, Tracy right. Ash. Love you. Love I you. love you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Love you. Bye. Bye. Love you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>